Greetings, friends of typography. Rudolf Koch is a famous German calligrapher and type designer. He created many successful typefaces over the course of several decades and today we are taking a closer look at his first one, which already demonstrated his extraordinary skills as a type designer, which to a large extent are rooted in his experience as a calligrapher. In fact, this typeface can be understood as a design which turns his blackletter writing style into a typeface. At first glance, the typeface looks like a typical German blackletter font. But if we take a closer look, we can see Koch tried to create a contemporary design which, at least to some extent, bridges the gap between blackletter and Roman typefaces. Koch's typeface was released in 1910, at a time when Germans debated whether they should use more Roman typefaces or whether they should stick with using blackletter exclusively. At its core, Koch's design remains a blackletter design, but he tried to incorporate Roman letter forms. Take a look at this comparison. Some letter forms are an obvious break with tradition while other letter forms kept the typical black letter skeleton. So while the design appeared somewhat modern for its time, it was still aimed at a market where people had sufficient experience with reading black letter. One author of a book about Rudolf Koch said the design of this typeface was the most profound event in the history of the production of fonts in Germany since 1790 when the printer Johann Friedrich Unger also experimented with the idea of combining blackletter and Roman typefaces. The original release already contained swash characters, initials, individual swashes, borders and other decorative materials. But it didn't stop there. The typeface was extremely successful and more and more styles were added over time. 
This even included an italic design, which was yet another break with tradition when it comes to black letter. Usually, the only way to emphasize a passage in a German black letter text was to increase the tracking. In the end, Koch's type family consisted of three weights, a unique condensed style, an italic style and even a hatched version making the type family one of the biggest and most versatile black letter type families of its time. You might have noticed that so far I have avoided to actually name Koch's typeface, because it is something worth discussing on its own. When the typeface was released, the first type specimens didn't put a proper name on the covers or the title pages. Instead, it just said a German typeface, which at that time was the established term for black letter fonts. Inside this type specimen booklet, the typeface is also referenced as Kochschrift, which makes more sense as a name, but in most places the design is just described as a German typeface. And this practice was also continued for the additional releases. Eine deutsche Schrägschrift, which means an italic German typeface. Deutsche Zierschrift, which means a decorative German typeface and so on. Not surprisingly, this caused some confusion and people just started to use the descriptive titles of the type specimens as a proper name for the typefaces themselves. And apparently even the type foundry itself didn't seem to be sure how to deal with that. If we look through the various type specimen books that were produced over the years, sometimes we see the name Kochschrift and sometimes it is called Deutsche Schrift. And that's it for this episode. If you liked this video, feel free to hit like and subscribe and check out similar videos in the Type Treasures playlist. Thanks for watching and a special thanks to our Patreon supporters. If you also want to support this channel and with that gain access to exclusive articles, videos, font downloads and typography galleries, head over to our Patreon page.